Hey, fourth grade students, family members, thanks for stopping by the website and checking out tonight's video. First things first, make sure your name goes at the top. It's going to be a very important review because, again, the questions on tomorrow's test look very similar to the questions you'll see tonight. I also went over a very similar review during math class today, so the students should have some familiarity with a lot of these questions. For a question like this, because we've been doing estimation, multiples, and factors since a little bit before break and now, I would like the students, since they should be able to have access to a calculator, if not, I hopefully gave them one. If not, I do apologize for that. You want to use a calculator to your advantage. Now that we're allowed to use them, make sure you're using them effectively. So I've got an estimation question. The first thing I would do is I would use the calculator to solve the actual answer 58 to 22 because the reason we use estimation is to see if answers are reasonable. My answer here is going to be 1,276. After I have figured out what the actual answer is, I would solve for every single one of these choices and whichever one is most reasonable in other words closest to the actual answer that is going to be your real answer so right now get a calculator multiply each four of these and see which one is closest to 1276 here's another one what is the estimated quotient well I'll bet you some students are thinking I don't know what operation to choose when I see quotient that means I need to divide so I'm taking 416 divided by 6 I need to again plug that into the calculator. Ooh, that one's not going to work. So I'm going to tell you right now that Mr. Panza made a mistake, which happens often. Make sure you skip that one because I can't do it with a remainder. In this case, I just want you to try and round it, which again, underline the 4, circle the 1, the number on the right. That tells you to keep the 4 the same and round everything else to a 0 and divide that by 6. So when I have 400 and I divide it by 6, my estimated quotient is somewhere around 66 and 6 repeating. The closest answer would be C. Not off to a good start. <laughs> Let's go to number 3. Which statement is incorrect? I'm trying to warn the students to make sure that they are aware of the directions because many times they get stumped. On a question like this, you've got to make sure you're answering the correct question. Well, when you go through, you're going to see 2 is a common factor of 24 and 72. Even though that's true, it's not the right answer because we're looking for the incorrect one. I know that 3 is also a factor of 12 and of 39, so B is not the correct answer. 13 into 52 or 104, or 7 into 14 and 82. If you're not sure, the way you decide if something is an actual factor is you divide. So I'm going to take 52 and I'll divide it by 13 and as long as I don't get a decimal that means it's a factor then I'm gonna take 104 I'm gonna divide that by 13 I don't get a decimal which means C is not my answer I'm willing to bet that D is the answer but just to double check 14 divided by 7 that's gonna get me 2 and 82 divided by 7 that gets me a decimal and because it's a decimal that means this one is the incorrect answer Students also learned how to figure out multiples. Multiples is nothing more than skip counting. So in this case, I'm looking for you to figure out the first couple of multiples of 6. 6 is the first multiple, followed by 12. If I were to continue to figure out multiples, you just skip count. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so on. But that's not the answer, and students will get stumped here because they will either see 6 or 12 in circle A or B, when actually the answer is C, 18 because they need to add 6 and 12 to get the sum of those first two multiples. Which pair of these numbers has 18 as a common factor? Again, you have to go ahead and divide each to see if they are factors. And if they are factors, then you know that it's the right answer. This time you're looking for the pair that has 18 as a common factor. Multiples are skip counting, which means factors would have to connect. So I've got to find all of the factors of 18. 18 starts with 1 and connects to 18. 2 can also go into 18 9 times. 3 is also a factor 6 times. 4 is not, 5 is not, 6 is already there, so here are all of my factors. Well right away I know that 7 is not a factor, that doesn't work. 2 and 3, that's a possibility. 18 36 is way too big. 
9 and 18 would work. And 2 and 3 would work. So A and D are possible common factors of these numbers. Maddie bought 36 boxes of cookies for a holiday party. Each box holds 12 cookies. About how many cookies does Maddie have? Again, that about is a key word because then you need to estimate. Well, what I need to do is realize that I need to multiply to figure out the total answer, which is 36 times 12. And that gets me 432. Now I need to find what is the closest estimate. In other words, how would I round this? There's a couple different ways I could round it. I could round 36 to 35, 12 to 10. But what I would do is I would just figure out which one is closest to 432, which in this case is B. Showing your work on the bottom, of course. Number seven, find the product when you multiply 327 by 7. Estimate to check and see if your answer is reasonable. Pull out your handy dandy calculator, multiply 327 times 7, and you get 2,200, and of course, my memory not that good, 89. But my estimation, I need to underline the number I'm estimating, circle the number to the right. If it's 4 below, I leave the 3 go. Everything else becomes a 0, and I multiply that by 7. That's going to give me an answer of 2,100, and yes, my answer is reasonable. Number eight, what are the sum of all the factors of 28? Well, factors, again, are the ones that connect. One has a rainbow connection to 28, because one times 28 is 28. Two connects to 14. Three does not go into 28, and if you think I'm lying, you can take 28, divide it by three, and notice that I get a decimal. What about 4? Divided by 4. Ooh, 4 and 7 work. 4 and 7. Those work. 5 wouldn't work. What about 6? Take 28 divided by 6. Nope, that's not a factor, and I already have 7. But to find the sum, I need to add 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14 plus 28, and you put that sum right there. I know I'm going a bit fast, but I just want to make sure that you have a general understanding of these questions. The greatest common factor of 12 and 16, the easiest way to find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple are to take the numbers, to line them up, and see what they have in common. I'm talking about factors here, so I'm talking about the rainbow connections again. One's going to connect to 12, just like one will connect to 16. 2 is also a factor of 12 because 6 times 2 is 12. And 2 is also a factor of 16 because 8 and 16. 3 is a factor of 12 because 4 times 3 would get me 12. 3 is not of 16, but how about 4? Let's try it out. 16 divided by 4 gets me 4, which means 4 is a factor. Well, the greatest number that 12 and 16 have as a common factor is going to be 4. This is another tricky question. Many students get tripped up by the way this question is asked. Find two prime numbers between 20 and 35. What I told them to do is actually write the numbers that are from 20 to 35. So 20, 21, 22, 23, and they'd go all the way up to 35. What they're looking for is a prime number. A prime number is a number that is divisible by one in itself and has those two factors only. A number like 23, there's no other number that can be divided evenly into 23. So 23 is an example of a prime number. Can you find another one? I certainly can. I hope you can too. Least common multiple. Once again, use the same strategy that we used for greatest common factor. Except this time, you're going to skip count. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Then for 5, I go 5, 10, and 15. And I found my least common multiple because it's the very first one that matches for the least common multiple. In this case, it's 15. A couple of word problems to wrap up our homework tonight. Thanks again for stopping by. Susie bought 18 books. Each book cost $6. Find the total amount Susie spent on the books and show your work. Again, you'd have to figure out the exact cost there because they want the total. 
Jack went to buy a TV. He had $284, and the TV cost $427. About how much more money does Jack need to order the TV? Round your answer to the nearest hundred. So in this case, you need to estimate to figure out how much he would need. And finally, after getting a loan, Jack paid $500 for the TV. How much change did he receive? Show your work. So if you're talking about change, you're probably going to subtract. Hope this video helped you out. Again, estimation, factors, multiples, go over these tonight, especially how to find the greatest common factor, least common multiples, and review prime and composite.